Hi, and welcome to a session of web scraping in Python using beautiful suit. My name is Scott Barto, and this program is offered to you by the Clifton Park Half Moon Library. This will be a one, one class session, and we will be uh, learning all about how to, how to scrape the web of data using uh, Python's, Python and beautiful soup. Uh, the internet is loaded with data, information, and uh, uh, a lot of times the, the information is not available through a convenient CSV export or, or um, uh, an easy connect API. So uh, another way to, to grab data that you, you want to, uh, to analyze is to uh, do web scraping. And um, um, it's helpful in this class to have a, a basic understanding of Python and also to understand um, how web pages are, are constructed using HTML, CSS, um, and even maybe a little bit of uh, JavaScript. But you don't, you don't need too much of uh, all those uh, knowledge of all those technologies. But um, it, it definitely is, uh, uh, would be helpful to have a, a taste of each of them to, uh, to understand this, this uh, tutorial a little bit better. So, uh, so the fundamentals of web scraping, okay? Um, uh, let's see. So how does web scraping work? So when you scrape, scrape the web, we write code that sends a request to the server that's hosting the page that you're trying to grab the data from. And the server will return the source code, HTML mostly, uh, for the page or pages that you're requesting. So, so far, essentially, you're doing the same thing that a web browser does. You're sending a server a request with a specific URL, and you're asking that server to return the code for that page. So, but unlike the web browser, uh, when you web scrape, uh, the web scraping code won't interpret the page's source code. So basically, it will basically it will just return the HTML source code um, intact. So uh, let's see. So say uh, there was a web page that has a an HTML table in it. So um, I want to uh, extract the the data that's inside that table. So you would do a request of the content of the the source code of the web page of the of a specific. Uh, uh, URL, you know, a, a, a specific web page address. And you would identify the elements or the HTML tags on the page uh, for the part of the, uh, the data that you, that you want to collect. And you will extract the different parts of that data. You, you'll drill down um, so say we, we want to extract the table from a web page. We want to extract the data that was inside that table. So we extract the table, then we drill down even farther uh, and we would look for uh, uh, maybe certain uh, HTML tags within the table. So uh, if this sounds really complicated, it's, it's not. Um, and uh, that's it. Why don't, why don't I show you how um, how to get started, and and then maybe uh, uh, web scraping the whole concept of web scraping, scraping will make a little more sense. All right, so there are there actually before I get into that, I just want to say um, that web scraping uh, the legalities of web scraping. Uh, it's not, 
it's not um, cut and dry as far as oh if it's if it's uh, something that that people are hosting that people that are hosting websites um, some don't mind if you if you scrape their websites others um, don't enjoy it a whole lot so uh, uh, and and many websites don't order or offer clear guidance on one way or another whether they um, don't like it or or whether they're they're fine with you scraping their website for data so so before you scrape any website uh, you want to look at the terms and conditions of the page of that website to see if there are any explicit rules about scraping um, if there are you should follow them all right if there are not then it becomes more of a judgment call all right because when you when you're scraping data it consumes a lot of uh, that web pages server resources for the for the, the host website so if you're just scraping one page once then that's not going to cause any kind of problems but um if you're if your code is scraping thousands of pages every every uh few minutes then that could possibly uh, get very expensive for the website owner so um you just have to be very considerate of uh, uh, the data you're trying to scrape. Now there are there are plenty of dead data sites out there, or uh, uh, websites out there that that um, offer you examples uh, uh, to uh, to be able to scrape the data and to um, you know practice web scraping. Um, you just have to know what you're doing, and uh, and and be careful and be considerate of of, uh, of people's websites and and the resources you might be using by scraping the data. All right, so um, let's uh, just go over a quick website, web scraping best practices. All right, so never scrape more frequently than you, than you have to. All right, so try to, try to be very efficient with your web scraping. Um, consider caching the content you scrape so that it's only downloaded once. So if I scrape a website and grab a whole bunch of data, if I cache that data, then I don't have to constantly go back and keep scraping that website to get the data again and again and again. Um, you, you do it one time, you cache it so that you have the data on your computer, on your machine, and um, then you don't have to hit their, uh, their uh, the website server again. Um, and uh, the third uh, best practice would be build pauses into your code using functions like time.sleep to keep from overwhelming ser servers with too many requests too quickly, all right? So, uh, so consider using time.sleep. That, uh, that function um, does allow your, your, your web scraping to be paused and to, um, to not be constantly hitting that server of the website that you wanna gather data on. So, all right, with that, let's, let's go into uh, um, some basic uh, web page concepts, right? All right, because we're going to be scraping, scraping the web page. So we have to have a little bit of understanding towards how web pages are built, right? So we have to understand um, a, just a, a little bit of HTML, CSS, um, and JavaScript, all right? These are the three technologies that go into building web pages. HTML are the building blocks of every web page. They're, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. These are, uh, uh, it's a tag-based language. Uh, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And this basically gives the, uh, the look and feel, the cosmetics of the, um, of the website, the web page. And finally, you have JavaScript, which is, um, which allows your web pages to be dynamic and, and instead of just being static web pages that just have content on them. Uh, JavaScript allows your web pages to come alive and to have animations and um, to be able to uh, show and hide different, uh, different parts of your website. And, um, and finally, uh, um, there is a, uh, another piece to web pages and those are images, image formats. 
<coughs> which are uh, you know, the most typical image formats are, are JPEGs, JPGs, or PNGs. <coughs> All right. So. Okay, so now that we've gone over the structure of a web page, let's go uh, over, um, let's let's start doing the fun stuff, the actual scraping of content from uh, from a web page. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna have to you're gonna have to have is the requests library, and um, so when you when you've downloaded uh, Python onto your machine. Um, uh, this is uh, I'm using uh, Python 3.6.1, and um, when you do do a download with Python, you're going to download PIP, which is uh, the installer of the different libraries for Python. So, in uh, in the Python shell, if you look to the right of my screen, um, I've got the Python shell, which is a command line for Python, and um, to install the the uh, the request library, um, which I already have installed on my machine, I would do pip install request and hit enter, and pip pip should should install the the request library for you. And how we use the request library is. And then once you have that installed, um, the way to see if uh, if you actually have it correctly installed on your machine, you do an import request in on the uh, command line in the Python shell. So if you look to the right of my screen, import requests, and I hit enter, and it should should return the uh, prompt of three greater than signs. So I hit enter and it's running. It's taking a little while and there we go. So I have the, the three greater than signs. All right. So off to the off to the left of my screen, I have the idle, the test editor for Python, which is also um, included in the Python download that you uh, hopefully have done to you for your machine. Uh, the Python download is available in at the uh, website python.org and uh, just download the uh, whatever version three point something of Python. There's also a, a, a version two point something, um, the, the 2.0 version of Python, uh, which we're not using. We're using the more recent three point whatever version. All right, and the way we're going to use the request library is um, so I'll off to the off to the left in my idle session. I'm going to um, I'm going to import the request library. So import space request request hit enter, and then the next line I'll do something simple like. Um, We are going to do We are going to we're going to take a look at a very basic uh, website, very um, used website, Google.com. All right, so we'll look at the Google.com landing page because uh, this is a, a page that I know has very little on it, uh, very little content. So uh, when we do our scraping, we're not we're not overloading hitting that website because there's not a whole lot on it. All right, so 
<clears throat> Next thing we have to do is we have to import beautiful soup. All right, so if you look over to the right, uh, once again, you have to do, uh, to install beautiful soup, you would do PIP install, and then it would be uh, B-A-U-T-I-F-U-L, capital S-O-U-P, install beautiful soup. All right, and that should install the beautiful soup library. And just to make sure, I've already done that on my machine, so to make sure that I have beautiful soup available, import B-A-U-T-I-F-U-L-S-O-U-P, and I'll hit enter. Not found, beautiful soup. Okay. All right, so um, it's not import beautiful soup, but it's actually import. So look off to the right. In the Python shell, I type B, import BS4. That is what is installed. And, it, and you can see after I typed in import space BS4, it returns the, uh, the prompt in the Python shell of three greater than signs. So what had to be, what had to be installed is um, it would be PIP install uh, BS4. And beautiful soup is the parser that's part of that. It, it's a library that's part of that BS4 install. So um, that's what you have to type in to, uh, to install BS4. And then BS4, um, if you look in over to the left in idle, we're going to do, we're going to do from So we'll do from BS4 base and then import beautiful soup. So, all right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, run this this program and uh, just make sure that uh, the importing of, of requests, the request library and the BS4 beautiful soup library are, um, are working correctly. So um, in idle, in the test editor for Python, up in the toolbar, you click on run, and then the third option, run module. All right, I'll click okay, source must be saved, okay, to save. And this will be the first time through And so I'm going to save it. Where is that? And I will create a new folder. Yes. All right, so you you have a folder that you have set up already um, that you want to save these files to. All right, so um, you can see the save save as type is Python files. So, uh, and then for the file name, we'll call it. Uh, uh, let me call it uh, Google. Right, and dot py. And the, the, the dot py is the extension you use for all your Python programs. I click save. And my program ran, it's running. And if you look over to the right of my screen on the, in the Python shell, it said restart. And it gave the uh, the path where this uh, Google scrape that py file that I just saved is being run uh, is located at and, and it's being run and then it it follows with the uh, the prompt 
saying that hey everything ran fine but nothing's nothing's going to show in the uh, python shell because uh, uh all we're doing is importing requests and we're importing the uh, beautiful soup all right so that shows that no errors everything's working fine all right so now let's move on to actually um actually doing a, a request All right, so <clears throat> using the request library, all right, what we're doing is we need to download the page that we want to scrape the data from. So the page that we're looking at is google.com. And um, what we're trying to do is On that and put it here. All right. So, um, so we'll do requests. Actually, we we'll do. We'll do result equals, and we'll do requests. I get, and then we'll do the the website HTTPS. Yes, www.google.com. And um. What we can do is we can do a uh, Python print and we'll do result headers print result dot headers. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. We're going to just take a look at the status code. So status underscore code. All right. So if we run this, we've imported, imported the request library, imported uh, beautiful soup. To be able to parse the data and so we're calling we created a variable name result and we are calling the the request library and in the request library is a method called get and then inside parentheses we're passing the argument for the method get of um, the url that we want all right, the address of the web page that we want to take a look at the data from. And then on this last line, I'm, I'm doing a uh, Python print and I'm just saying uh, the variable result dot and then uh, status on this word code, which will display the status code. If this worked correctly, if I'm able to pull down the, the, uh, the uh, information from the web page, Correctly, then the status code should return a 200. All right. So if I go up to the toolbar, I click on run from module, click OK. The file's already been saved. It's saved again. Look over to the right of my screen, and the Python shell shows that it went out to the file Google scrape.py and it returned a, a value of 200 which means that it successfully was able to download the information from that web page. All right. Another thing you can do is I can do a print parenthesis and I take my variable result that I dumped the, uh, the, uh, the content from the web page into result and dot header headers. All right. And now if I run run again, I will it'll return the status of 200 and it also it'll return the headers from this web page. All right, so uh, run, run module, click okay. And let's see what happens. If you look over to the right, it returns 200, then it returns the header, all right? Sunday, the 11th of April, 2021. All right, 
and some other information. Okay. All right, so that's how you can display it. Once you uh, use the request library dot get method, you uh, download the web page and you dump it into. Um, and you should take a look to make sure the status code is, is all right of 200. And also, uh, and also, all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna comment out the uh, the two print lines in our program. And the way to comment out in Python is with a hashtag. And you can see off to the left, once I use the hashtag, it turns the line red, because now they're just comment lines, so it won't actually do the print. Uh, let's see. So, so the next step, now that we've used the, uh, the request I get to pull down the information. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to say, let's say source. So we create a variable called SRC for source equals, and we'll say result. So our result variable dot content, right? And that will pull down the content. And we can check that by um, by doing a print parenthesis, and then we'll do the, the the value of the variable source inside the parentheses. All right, so we did a request that get to pull the information down in, and put it into the variable result. And then we're going to um, have result dot content. Uh, the content a, a, a method that's going to load the content into it, into the uh, SRC source variable. All right, so up in the toolbar, I'll do run, run module, click OK, and off to the off to the right, um, it loads up the the, uh, the the content of the uh, Google.com web page. All right, now um, one, one way to, to make that the code look, uh, to look better when we display it is by using, let's say, uh, by, by using something called um, uh, Prettify. We're able to organize the uh, the content better, but um, first, what we want to do is we want to parse out the uh, parse out the data. So I'm going to um, I'm going to comment out the uh, the print of the source, and so here's where we're going to do us. Uh, here's where we're going to use the uh, beautiful soup. So I'll create a variable called soup equals, and then oops. And with the beautiful, beautiful soup response text, text comma, and then we'll do HTML dot parser surrounded with quotes and close out the parentheses. All right, I'll show you this. All right, so you can see the full line that I just added to our idle session. And then we're going to print out using the, uh, we're going to print the value of the soup variable dot printify. All right. And that should organize our data a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I come over here to our Python shell. And I'm going to close it out. 
clear it out. All right, and now here, I'll do a run, run module. And it'll open up a, a new Python shell session. Uh, response is not defined. Oh, okay. Let me uh, correct my error. So um, I've got response that text, and it should be result. Result, which was from up above. Remember, result is the variable name that we created up here when we did request I get. Right. Result. Yes. Result. Okay. Result. Okay. Result. Okay. Sorry. So that should work. I'm doing soup. Build that test. I'll do run, run module. Okay. And if you look to the right in the Python shell, all right. Let's open that up. Okay. And that is all. The data coming back in HTML format. And that's how you use beautiful soup to parse the data. Now let's just take a look at what else we can do. Okay, so um so what we'll do is up above here we we took uh source and we took the result that content so here we'll replace result with source all right so source dot test i mean um there won't be dot test it'll just be source and instead of html parser we're going to use LSML, surround with quotes, LSML, all right. And I'm going to comment out this line with the print. All right, so let's do a run and nothing should be printed out, so. I run, run module and let's see what happens. Oops. Okay. Yeah, close out the Python shell. I'll do a run, run module again. Python shell is running. And it clears it out. All right, so let's move on. All right, so we use beautiful soup to parse out our data. Now let's let's try and find specific information. All right, so I'm going to create in my program, I'm going to create a, a variable named links. So, lints, lints dot, or lints equals, and we'll do soup dot find underscore all. Oops. Find underscore all. And then in parentheses, what I want to look for is the A tag. And A stand, in HTML stands for anchor tag. And when you have the um, anchor tags, you're going to um, be able to find where all the links are on that page. 
All right, remember the page that we're looking at is google.com. And so I created a variable named links and it equals soup, which uh, was the variable up here where we used beautiful soup and we parsed the source data. And so we're doing soup dot, and then the, uh, the method is find underscore all. So I'm finding all the A tags on this page. All right, and we can do print. We can do print. And we'll do links and see what comes out. All right. So run, run module there. And if you look to the right in the Python shell, all right, so it's scraping all. I'll go to the top, all right. So the first line is an A tag, right? Have the A tag, class equals blah, blah, blah. And set the href attribute, right? For the link. And then here's the closing A tag. And then the next one is right here. I'm highlighting the next one. All right. And here's the closing A tag. All right. So it's finding all the A tags on the uh, landing page for google.com. All right. So next. What if what if we wanted to find the about? All right, so we have that. I'm going to comment out the print. All right. All right. So say we have a, a little loop. Okay. Ah, uh, for link image. All right. Yeah. Okay. So if we say, um, for link. Now this is using a for loop in Python, all right? So for link, link is uh, the temporary variable, right? Every time we loop, we're going to be loading something into the variable link in links, all right? So links, there's multiple links. And then you follow it with a, a colon in Python. Hit enter and it automatically indents inside the for loop. And then if, if about the string about in link that text, text colon, right? Whenever you have conditionals, if, uh, else, if, else, if, or, or else. Um, in Python, you have to uh, follow it with a, uh, you have to end the conditional statement with a colon. Hit enter, and I indent inside the if now. And I'm going to print the temporary variable in our for loop link. And that's it. All right, so let's see what happens. Run the module. Okay. So if you look to the right in the Python shell, I'm gonna um, I'm going to uh, delete the Python shell so I can clear it out. Now I'll do run run module again. Brings up the Python shell. It's running my my Google straight py file, and what it does is it returns it returns the uh, a a reference or the a tag that has about in the text. All right. So if you look at this in the Python shell, you can see here's the a tag that it found. 
And then it looks for the text for that tag. And the text is about Google. And I was looking for the word about. And so it listed that. If there were more A tags that had text that said the word about, then there would be a displayed on my in the Python shell. So that's how we use the uh, the Google the Google um, homepage landing page to be able to scrape the data. So we we were able to use the request library and the beautiful soup library to uh, to be able to look for any all find all the A tags in the um, in the content of this web page, and then find uh, only list out the A tags that have um, the word about in the text. All right, so that's how you drill down with the data that you want returned from a from a web page when you're scraping a web page. All right, so next I want I want to quickly show you how how to um, create a program. That uses your own file. All right. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to move the uh, Python shell over. All right. So, uh, what we're using today is we're, we're using Python the Python language, and we're using a couple of libraries, request library and the, the, the beautiful soup library to, um, uh, the request library is used to pull the data down from a web page. Beautiful soup library is used to parse the data that, that uh, you're pulling down. All right, so first what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a nice little, website or a nice little program that's written in, in um, that's written in uh, Python and let's see what we're going to do so I am going to open this object program all right So what this does is it's just sample HTML code that you can you can download or you can um, put into a variable in Python. So I'm I'm, I'm in a brand new uh, um, I'm in a brand new uh, idle session, right? So it's a new program, and I created a variable. I created this variable. HTML underscore DOC, right? So that's the variable name in Python, and then it equals, and I've got um, three double quotes after the equal sign, and then down here I have three double quotes um, with all, all my HTML content um, loaded in between the quotes. All right, and so you can see I have you know the HTML tag, I have a head tag, title tag, uh, I have some uh, title information, then I've got the body. So if you know anything about HTML, you under you would you'll understand these uh, HTML tags. Um, I've got some paragraph tags, I've got the um, some A tags, anchor tags, um, I've got uh, some bolding, I've got some block quote. Uh, attributes, so you know, tags in this case. All right, so all all this HTML information is being loaded into the variable HTML underscore doc. All right, then then after the HTML content, we have with open, and then I'm I'm naming my file index.html. And I surround that in single quotes, comma, W to, and the lowercase w stands for write. So I'm, I'm writing to this index.html file 
as as f, which is file, or uh, um, giving giving the file an alias name of f, which in this case stands for file. So, and then inside the uh, the open, I'm doing a f dot write, and in the parentheses, I'm passing HTML underscore doc, which is up here, this information. So when I run this uh, when I run this Python program, what it's going to do is it's going to take all this HTML that I have highlighted here. It's going to dump it into a file called index.html that will be created and written to. And it'll be in the same folder that you are running this uh, program in. All right, so. I'll do a run, run module. And my Python shell comes up and I get the uh, everything's okay prompt, uh, three greater than signs. All right, so you're not gonna see anything in the Python shell. It's just gonna say, oh yeah, that ran fine. But now if I go into File Explorer on my Windows computer, what I will see is this takes one second and File Explorer comes up and I'm gonna go into my web scraping folder. And what happens is this index file is created. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna move my index file over to the class folder. All right. Double click on class and here's my index.html file. Now, if you double click on an HTML file, it will open it up in a browser. And in this case, my browser will be Chrome. So if I double click on my file that I just wrote to with my Python program, this is what the HTML says, right? I've got a title, the Dormouse's story. I've got a paragraph, once upon a time, blah, blah, blah. I've got... Um, I've got a uh, header extremely bold with a paragraph extremely bold, test one, two. All right, I've got a couple of links here. I've got Elise as a link, Lacey as a link, Kelly as a link. All right, so, all right, so now let's go back to our program. Right, so I'll go into idle. And so this is the, uh, the program we just created. And what I want now is I want to create, uh, I go up to the toolbar, do a file, and then new file. And I want to create a brand new program. Right. I'm going to have these programs be minimized. Right. And just title. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. So I just wanna show you uh, some of the things you can do. And we're going to uh, scrape the information from the file we just created. All right, so. so what we did was we created an object in Python with that new file. All right, so um, once again, the way we're going to start our program is we have to import requests. So import requests. Hit enter a couple of times, then we'll do from BS4 import B-A-U-T-I-F-U-L soup, capital S soup. All right, so uh, let's see what we can do. Okay, so all right, let's let's do let's do um. A, 
do a very book called soup equals B A U A U to full soup. And then parentheses. Oops. Parentheses. Back. And L S M L and close parentheses. All right, so parsing the data that we have, and let's see um, see what happens when we print out the value of the variable soup. I'm going to save this in class. Uh, well, it, uh, yeah. I want to start it in that. Oops. So import space request. I must have gotten cut off somehow. So I'll do run, run module. And look over to the right in the Python shell, it's trolling up my program and throwing an error. HTML doc is not defined already. Right. So what I have to do is I have to pull my file. Right. So, uh, unfortunately, I, I skipped the step. So let's say results equals, and we'll do request dot get method get, and then we'll do index dot html. Right. See if that works. And the module and cancel oh, so instead of HTML die, we'll do results and, and click OK to save it. Let's see what happens in the Python shell. Nope, oh, name request is not. Oh, results. Uh, request that get. Let's see if that works. All right. Now let's try and figure out this. All right. So uh, where we left off, we, we have this uh, HTML underscore doc with HTML embedded in it. Uh, we, we ran the, uh, the open index.html file uh, using that HTML underscore doc HTML information. And uh, that allowed us to uh, load up the file and be able to display it in a web browser, uh, which you see on the screen right now. So. Uh, we can comment out the uh, the loading of the HTML into the file, and we'll just keep the information HTML underscore doc above. We're not going to be um, uh, needing the import of the request because we're not downloading it from a uh, a web page. It's just a homemade web page that we created above. Uh, we do need the, the from BS4 import beautiful soup. 
And then we have results. We have results here. And um, yeah, we don't need that either. What we do need is we have our beautiful soup and we can take this out. Okay. <clears throat> we have soup equals beautiful soup. And within that, we're going to have our HTML dot. HTML underscore dot is the variable name from up above where we loaded up HTML information, comma, and then uh, wrapped in single quotes, we have LSML and then XML. And uh, close it out with a parenthesis. And now let's see what we want to print soup. All right. And we'll do a run, run module. And, and there you have it. So um, the way it's being displayed in the Python shell, this is the HTML that we have loaded up here in, in the variable HTML doc. Um, now, if you wanted this to be prettier, I can comment out this print soup. And we'll do print soup dot pretty by, and that will um, put the HTML tags in their proper alignment, uh, making the code look a whole lot nicer. So if you look over to the right, let's say I'm gonna extend my Python shell so. You can see if it looks better. All right, so that's what Printify will do for you. It'll organize your um, the data from the web page better. All right, so what else should we do with our data set? So um, say I want to find just the first P tag. So I would do um, I do a print and it shouldn't be soup that find. So it's it's just a single find will find the first occurrence of whatever you're looking for. And what we're looking for in single quotes, we put P. So that's the P tag in HTML. <clears throat> and so if you, if you go up above in our in our program, the first P tag is right here. And it should say the Dormouse's story. All right, so that's what should be printed out in the Python shell when we run our program. So I'm going to clear out our Python shell because it's looking pretty, uh, pretty messy. So I'll clear it out. And then I will do uh, in my idle session run run module, which OK. And in the uh, what doesn't it like? Um, in the not that. Ah, I was. If you look at the uh, the the print statement with soup that find and then in parentheses the p tag, um, I forgot to do a uh, closing parenthesis on that statement. So I'll do run run module. And it's running, and it printed out the whole thing. Soup, soup that fine. 
So, so if we just want to find the one p tag, the first p tag of our um, of our block of HTML code up here, um, we would just do the uh, print. We would print out what that p tag is. So it would be soup dot find in parentheses and then the p tag surrounded in single quotes or double quotes. So if I do run run module, we should just print out the first p tag in our HTML. All right, so it's running it. And it prints out the p tag, class equals title, and the text is the Dormouse's story. All right. So now, uh, what if we wanted to? What if I want to print out all the p tags? So I'll comment out uh, with a hashtag this line, and I'll open up this line. All right. So print, and I'll do soup dot find underscore all. And then in the parentheses be a p tag. All right, so this is going to print out all our p tags. And if you look up above, we have uh, a p tag here, one here, uh, one here, and that's it. So we should we should print out three p tags. So run, run module, click on OK. And we have three, we have one. At two, which is a really long one, and then finally down here I have three. All right, so that's that's how you use some of the um, some of the commands to be able to find certain tags in HTML. And so, if we wanted to, uh, what if we wanted to just find? The bold tag. All right, so I'll do um, so give the name of the tag. All right, so so if I want to find the bold tag, I could do it like this. I could do um, I'll print it out, whatever the the first bold tag is. So. Um, soup dot and b for for bold. Instead of doing the uh, like what we did down here to find the first p tag, we did soup dot find, and then we looked for the p tag. Um, another way to do it is print, and then just have soup dot and then the tag name. All right, so this should find us our first bold tag, and it's running, and Here's the first bold tag, first B tag, and the test is the Dormouse's story. All right, so running out of time now. Um, I hope I hope you were able to put together all the different concepts uh, that are used in web scraping uh, using uh, using Python and uh, Python's uh, request library and beautiful soup library. Um, uh, thanks so much for joining me. My name once again is Scott Barto. This has been uh, web scraping in Python using beautiful soup. And uh, this class was generously offered to you by the Fifth and Park Chapman Library. And uh, once again, thanks, thanks for joining me today.